My freshman year, I don't play a lick. And before I knew it, I lost my mindset again. I began to recalibrate. You know, everybody doesn't play in the NBA. I'll graduate in four years. You know what? I just go get a good job. It's okay. It's okay. And the end of my freshman year, my daddy called me on the phone. He asked me a question. He said, son, you're not playing. Why not? Politics, dad. It's political. My father asked me a question. He says, how did your coach get paid, son? I said, Dad, he gets paid to win. He says, okay, son. If your coach gets paid to win, won't he play the players that give him the best chance to win? He said, son, you got recruited. You took all your visits. You chose Minnesota. You took your time. You chose Minnesota. You told me that you're going to turn that program around. You told me you're going to graduate in four years. You told me you're going to make more money in business than you did in sports. One of the core values of our training and development called family was accountability. That was a core value of that training and development organization called the Bond Family Accountability. He said, so go back and do what you said you're gonna do. My father reminded me of what I said I was gonna do. I went back to my coach's office. I said, coach, what do I need to do to play in the NBA? He looked confused. This is what I told him. I'm going to become somebody different. What do I need to do to play in the NBA? I'm taking this thing to the next level. We're about to rise up. So for you to be passionate, your logic and your emotions need to be intertwined. See, some of you guys have the intellect and some of you guys have the passion, but you have to have both to be successful in this business. Sharks are hunters and predators. They never stop swimming. In fact, if a shark stops swimming, it will die. If a shark goes backwards, it will die. Think like a shark, act like a shark, and behave like a shark. Can I ask you a question right now? Can I ask you a real question? Not your neighbor, I'm talking to you. What kind of student are you right now in life? You're in charge of your promotion. If you do five million and want to get to 10, you're in charge. In order for you to rise up, you better take your game to the next level. Your mindset needs to go to the next level. Your information needs to go to the next level. Your relationships need to go to the next level. Take your money and get information and access and you will get good habits and good rituals and you will go to the next level. Coach, what do I need to do to play in the NBA? He said, you can't run, you can't jump, you can't dribble, you can't shoot, and you can't rebound, son. Next year, I'll be your most improved player. I'm going to think, I'm going to execute, and I'm going to win. I'm going to think, I'm going to execute, and I'm going to win. I'm going to execute what I've been trained to do. I'm connected to a shark. I'm connected to the greatest training organization in the world. And when I get home, I'm going to become somebody different. What do I need to do? You need to have an honest self-assessment about what your weaknesses are. And that's how you get to the next level. My sophomore year rolls around. We go all the way to the Sweet 16, and I'm the top six man in the country. I go back to my coach. What do I need to do to play in the NBA? The list got shorter. The next year, we went all the way to the Elite Eight. We were one shot away from the Final Four, and I was the top six man in the country. I carved out a niche. And that's what impact players do. They make their community better. They make their city better. They make their town better. They make realtors better. Be an impact player and anyone in your life, if they need a shark, you become their shark. All I had to do was have one good year and I walked right into the NBA. My senior year, everything lines up. But the first game of my senior year, I break my foot. I come back in six weeks and I break my foot a second time. In my mind, my college career was over and my NBA dreams were dead. I have a seven points a game. I got offered a $75,000 job because one of our season ticket holders liked me. Right before I took the job, my daddy called me on the phone. He would always ask the right questions at the right time. He said, you had a tough year, son, what's next? I said, Daddy, I'm going to be a hospital administrator, $75,000 job. He said, not bad, son, but can I ask you a question? Do you believe you're an NBA player? 
Come on now, Dad. I only have seven points a game, Dad. We're not like these other black families that just need basketball, Dad. We're educated, Dad. We're not dependent on basketball, Dad. We're balanced, Dad. We're educated, Dad. I got a $75,000 job, Dad. Do you believe, son? He was checking my mindset. He was checking to see, was I thinking like an A student? Or was I falling back into that C mindset? Do you believe you're an NBA player? I said, yeah, Dad, I do. He said, well, go for it, son, but, but Dad, I never started in college, but, but, but. My father said, you told me, son, that you're gonna turn that program around and you did it from the bench, son. You told me you're gonna graduate in four years, son. The average student graduating five, I'm proud of you. But you told me that you're gonna play in NBA. And you told me you're gonna make more money in business than you did in sports. Do you believe you're an NBA ball player? I do, daddy. Go for it, son. Go for it. I go back to my coach's office and I said, Coach, what do I need to do to play in the NBA? He teared up. I teared up. He said, I'll be honest with you, son. When I recruited you, I heard you as a mama's boy. But you're not. In fact, you're one of the toughest players I've ever had. I'm a Hall of Fame motivational speaker. I go all over the world running my mouth. But he gave me the greatest compliment I've ever received. He said, you're just like your daddy. <laughs> My daddy was a shark. And I was a sucker fish. But that moment, was my opportunity to turn into a shark myself. If you hang around sharks long enough, it will transform your mindset. And I promise you, you will be like a shark. You will think like a shark. And you can't go backwards. And if you stop swimming, you will die. Brian Buffini, he can't go backwards. And if he stops swimming, he will die. So ladies and gentlemen, you're connected to the right shark. All you need to do is be a good sucker fish. Success is all around you. Just pay attention. Every time you leave a business meeting, consciously and subconsciously, that person is debriefing you. Are you likable? Do you brighten up a room when you enter? Or do you brighten up a room when you leave? Are you good with people? And don't you ever be a Sarah Parasite, which means don't you ever come to this conference and go back home and do nothing. And then claim, oh, well, I tried and it didn't work. No. My college basketball coach said, son, I think you should be a motivational speaker. I said, coach, I can talk the rest of my life. What do I need to do to play in the NBA? He said, if you do those two things, you are play in the NBA. You gotta better shoot the three-point shot with range. And you gotta lose about 15 pounds because you don't pass the eyeball test. When I talk about the eyeball test, I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about me. He says, the NBA thinks you're a football player trying to play basketball. You gotta lose weight to change the perception. I lost 15 pounds, and I became the first ever undrafted rookie free agent in the history of the NBA to start opening night. <laughs>